Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is the English translation of the Majlis of Hazrat Muhammad Zama Sahib Damad Barakatuhum, which took place on Sunday, the 5th of Rabi'ul Awwal, 1444, corresponding with the English date, 2nd of October 2022. This Majlis took place after the Maghrib Salat at Jamia Islamia Isha'atul Ulum Akkal Kua, Maharashtra, India. As it well starts off this majlis by quoting the ayat of the Quran in Majid, Qad aflaha man tazakka wa dhakar asma rabbihi fasalla bal tu'thirun al-hayat al-dunya wal-akhiratu khayru wa abqa inna hadha lafis suhufi al-ula suhufi Ibrahim wa Musa. You people have requested me to make dua. I'm making dua for myself and for everyone else as well. Allah Ta'ala, give me the tawfiq and the hidayat of making dua in the proper manner. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has mentioned, a dua umukhul ibadah. Dua is the essence of ibadat. Hazrat Tanwi Rahmatullah Alayhi used to make tashri of it in this manner. He says when a person is making dua, number one, he is presenting his needs in the court of Allah. And number two, is that dua in itself is ibadat, that whether it is accepted immediately or not, a person should not feel hopeless and despondent, rather he should understand that he carried, carried out a major ibadat in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him the opportunity of making dua in his court, this on its own is such a great treasure. Hazrat Marana Shah Wasiullah Sahib used to say that a very very high maqam and station in suluk and tasawwuf is this, that when a person reaches that point, then the Shaykh then wins him off, rather he tells him that you continue progressing in this path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by carrying out uh, a dua with dua you know there was a person a youngster who used to make a fantastic dua meaning with so much of lajajat and uh, helplessness a humility that wherever we used to go he was asked to make dua Allah Ta'ala give us all the tawfiq and doing that today there is a great deficiency in the making of dua. Hazrat Marana Shah Wasiullah Sahib used to call us and then he used to say that this is happening and that is happening. All you people here in the madrasa in the khanka, I want you people all to make dua so that these difficulties that have has come, uh, they may be uh, removed. If you people come right, then the whole world will become right. Tum log sahi ho jai, dunya tik ho jai. Allahu Akbar. So we should all make ihtimam and be particular of making dua. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how? With such persistence, with his heart and his mind, and in what a tremendous way, he begged Allah and made dua to him on the eve of Badr. Addu'a'u Salahul Mu'min So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that dua is the weapon of a believer. So Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala an seen Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam exerting himself so much in dua that he even told Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that it is enough now. You have asked Allah so much that Nabi Sallallahu meaning went to that extent. Allahu Akbar. We also find this in the hadith that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is mentioned al wudu salahul mu'min that wudu is the weapon of a believer on that note I'll quote to, to you an incident which Hazrat Marana Shah Wasiullah Sahib used to uh, quote to us over and over again he used to speak about the incident of Shah Jahan and at that time you know people the kings used to ask people for fatwas and people used to give fatwas so nevertheless when this fatwa was asked 
and it was given as well the reply it was presented to mullah jeevan or the news reached him he wasn't too happy about that rather it was completely against the grain of what the answer should have been so what did he do at that time he said that al mufti wal mustafti hardo uh, kafiran that the person who is asking the verdict and the one who has given the verdict both of them have uh, become kafir nevertheless this now message reaches the king because it was given on the member of uh, the jama masjid in delhi nevertheless shah jahan then summons mullah jeevan so that he can be executed he releases the soldiers and sends them and in all of this year on the other side what's happening is aurangzeb the son of shah jahan who is the student of mullah jeevan nevertheless this news reaches mullah jeevan and he says oh is he coming to execute me or is he coming to kill me or sending the people not a problem let me also get my weapons ready and then he stands and he makes his way to go to his bench to make wudu allahu akbar this is the yaqeen because it was the words of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam al wudu salahul mu'min nevertheless in all of that aurangzeb goes to his father and he says abba don't do this if you want to lose your whole kingdom please don't do this rather ask for maafi and end the matter and shah jahan does exactly the same he asks for forgiveness and he abandons his earlier or his former intention mullah jeevan is the author of a great kitab of usul al-fiqh nurul anwar so hazrat maulana shah wasiullah sahab used to quote this to us over and over again to emphasize on our minds that how they understood the hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and how much of yaqeen they had in it <coughs> so dua is something very very great now hazrat maulana shah wasiullah sahab you know people it's quite commonly heard about him that he was this person with so much of a uh, uh, jalal <coughs> a very very fiery personality however if you just had to see him or witness him making dua with such a type of eagerness and helplessness in the court of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you would have never even said for one moment that this man had is that of a fiery nature or a jalali Allah Ta'ala also teach us the style and the manner in which we need to make dua. Now this is a kitab that I have, the Sturu Salikin li qurbi rabbil alamin. And in this kitab there is one ras- risala uh, which is asharatu qawaid fi tasqiyatin nufus. Ten principle in the reformation of uh, the nafs. In the reformation of the nafs. The first one of them is tawheed, wahidullah. فإن التوحيد رأس الطاعات that proclaim the oneness of Allah سبحانه وتعالى because it is uh, the pinnacle of all the ibadat of Allah سبحانه وتعالى رأس الطاعات without any توحيد a person will not be able to carry out any ibadat rather this is the foundation لا إله إلا الله Mujaddid al fetani used to say that if I can just find one corner and then I would carry out the dhikr of this word and this kalima La ilaha illallah At least we should have a ma'amul and a practice of carrying it out 100 uh, times Hazrat Shaykh al-Hadith wrote to Hazrat Mawlana Shah Wasiullah Sahib and other ulama that they should make ihtimam of dhikr in their madaris Fadhkuruni adhkurkum Remember me and I shall remember you Alama Ibn Qayyim has mentioned there is no greater virtue or fazilat for the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than mentioned in this particular ayat 
Hazrat Gangohi also had come to the same conclusion. Ana jali suman dakarani. I am the companion of the one who remembers me. So I have no arzu, I have no desire and wish other than that I have one corner in solitude and I can make takrar of this kalima, Allahu Akbar. He did not have the opportunity because he had tajdidi work. And what was his day and night, Allahu Akbar, we cannot even imagine. But we most definitely have that fursat and that opportunity. Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala used to say that this ummah, the latter part of it will have to adopt the same measures, strategies and put those things into place for their salah and their islah and their amal, that which the first part, the former part of this ummah had done. So from now, the students and all should become habitual and make it their practice. Uh, to carry out the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person by the time he leaves uloom at the age of 20, 25 and then he wants to start the dhikr? No, already from now. I went to Mazahirul Uloom also. I went to Raipur as well. Mawlana Aqil Saab, so many were present there. It is the tawajju of these people uh, that I have uh, strength. Nevertheless, I making was making Tarjumani uh, of the ilm of hadith and I even quoted to them this incident of Maulana Habibur Rahman uh, he said to uh, Hazrat Shaykh al Hadith that I am going to Raipur but when I return after three days I want you to give me an answer he says okay what's the question leave the three days what's the question he says the question is what is the tasawwuf all about so he answers him then, leave the three days, I'll give you the answer now. The start of suluk and tasawuf is ikhlas. Innam al-a'malu bin niyat and the heights, the pinnacle of it is an ta'bud Allah ka'anna katarah. sifat ihsan where you reach such a maqam that you actually behold, you actually uh, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in such a way that as if you can actually see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hazrat Mawlana Shah Fadr Rahman, Gan Murad Abadi, when he started teaching Bukhari Sharif and the students gathered, nevertheless, he let out a screech and a scream. Cheekh nikal gayi. And then the students were taken aback and then he gets back to himself again and he says, forgive me for that, I teach Bukhari in this manner. So one is the uloom and the knowledge of Bukhari Sharif and the other one is what? The other one is that of the hal. So Hazrat Morana Gangohi used to say, or rather about him it is narrated that if a person just makes, a, 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 a rather that he used to say Allah once in a gathering, just once he used to say Allah's name, Allah, and that whole majlis used to become heated and hot. So we need to make an effort to uh, create this hal and spiritual state. These were our akabirin. I even said on one occasion, Mawlana Taqiyuddin and all of them were there, I said that hadith, up till now, you were speaking about the zahar of the hadith. Listen, the hadith also has a button. If Quran has zahar and button, and the hadith is the tashrih, and the explanation of the Quran, then hadith will also have an apparent meaning and a deeper meaning, internal meaning as well. As I said in Imam Bukhari, hadith, what is the need and, and, and I mean what is the, uh, the, the, the effect of hadith? It's supposed to bring inabat, it's supposed to bring ruju turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the nisbat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's what it needs to bring into a person. Sayyidina Imam Bukhari, for every hadith that he wrote, he first made ghusl. Why? Because ghusl, with it will come taharate badan, the, the purification of the body. And after that he would recite salat, and then he used to record the hadith. And what salat became, uh, the, what the salat bring? Salat brings taharat a eh, uh, taharat e qalb, the purification of the heart. So I make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah ta'ala keeps me in this work that is kaam me lagai rakhe 
that it is my sona, butna, betna, uh, orna, bichona. It is everything. It is my life. Allah Ta'ala give me also zahiri sihat and batini sihat as well. Grant us uh, or give kabulia to all of this year. And here in the madrasa year, Allah Ta'ala give abundance of taraki and progress. MashaAllah. You know, Hazrat Maulana Shah Wasiullah Sahib used to say that husn and nazm and together with that uh, husn and khulq that your intizam year is immaculate and together with that in uh, bringing it and uh, executing whatever you need to do uh, you do it with husn and khulq now let's make dua Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanata wa fil akhirati hasanata wa qina adab al-nar Allahumma inna nas'aluka rizqan tayyiba wa ilman nafi'a wa amalan mutakabbala this nisbat of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that dalat which is coming from generation to generation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with that. Allah ta'ala let the madrasa go from strength to strength. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta sameeul alim wa tub alayna innaka anta tawabu al-rahim. Bi hurmati sayyidin nabiyyil kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.